In this video, you will learn to discuss the various types of security services and the technical implementation of security policies. And look at some security services in terms of security arts. Jump into the definition of security services. By the way, this uh, security services and these attack classifications come from a great textbook called Network Security Essentials, Application and Standards written by William Stallings, considered to be one of the uh, classic books in the security repertoire. So I certainly would think that a sufficiently advanced security professional would have this textbook on their shelf. So let's talk about um, security services, right? So a service is um, a processing or communication service, right, that's provided by a system. This would be the enterprise, the IT infrastructure. It's designed to give a specific kind of protection to a system resource. Security services are technical implementation of security policies. We talked about access control in an earlier module with that. And the security services that implement the security policies are implemented by the security mechanisms. So in this context, the security mechanisms are the security enforcement points that we talked about in Module 1. A security service, enhancing the security of data processing systems and information transfers of an organization. So this, there's some nuances here, right? So we're going to improve using security services the business process of the enterprise. And we're going to protect the movement of information of an organization. So that means internal movement, database to server, means external movement, for example, to a business partner. Purpose of security infrastructure is to be provide defensive mechanisms against a security attack. So obviously security services are designed to enhance our ability to uh, counter the security attacks that are presented against the enterprise. Security services um, can engage in it's a one-to-many relationship between a service and a security enforcement point. This makes sense that a uh, implementation of a technical policy can engage more than one element of a security enforcement point. So um, often replicates <clears throat> capabilities in the real world. So we think about how information moves securely. We've got signatures and dates protection from disclosure. That's why we put things in an envelope. <clears throat> we make sure they're not going to be destructed or uh, destroyed or, or modified. We can provide authenticity through notarization or witness signatures. Plus, the non-repudiation part of that can be accomplished from notarization or licensing. takes a look at a couple of definitions, and he's pulled out, out one from ITU, right, the International Telecommunications Union. That's the United Nations governing body for standards worldwide. X.800, a service provided by a protocol layer of communicating open systems, which ensures that adequate security of the systems or, or of data transfers. So, um, This means we think about the OSI protocol stack, right? It runs from applications to presentation sessions through the network, transfer protocols down to the physical part of that. That these layers, right, communicate with similar layers. That's the communicating to open systems, right, in another enterprise or another part of the enterprise and protects the information, both of the receiver, the transmitter, and the communication transfer that's in there. Now, kind of legalese, right? This re request for comment 2828, another standard document that's, that, that's uh, 
maintained by the ITU, a processing or communication service provided by a system to give a specific kind of protection to system resources. More clear to be sure. So um, once again, that 2828, a little more clear, right? Um, it talks about implementing the uh, services that are permitted uh, implemented by the security enforcement point. Those are the specific kinds of protections and the implementation of the security policies. So let's dive into some definitions of some specific security services as found in the X.800 document. Now remember, we had talked about this a little bit earlier, that X.800 is an artifact of the ITU, the International Telecommunications Telecommunications Union, which is not a workers' union, right? It is a, an association chartered and staffed by the United Nations to provide international standards for um, computer and network communications. Fairly, uh, fairly solid document. So Stallings talks about five security set service categories and, and with the 14 specific services that are in there. So highlighted with these six elements right here, there's various, there's classic security services which are traditionally discussed. Now notice that these things are written at a very high level. I like to think about them written at the level of the U.S. Constitution subject to legal interpretation. So the top one, right, is authentication is, is concerned with assuring that a communication is authentic. In fact, that it's, it's correct from Alice to Bob, and that it is measurable, right? Um, there's a sub um, subversion of this called peer entity authentication, which provides corroboration of the entity, identity rather, of, of, of a peer in an association. So that means Bob and Alice can authenticate each other. So Alice sends message, a message to Bob, and along with that goes, hi, Bob. I'm Alice. And Bob can read the message and say, yes, in fact, you are Alice. That is pure entity authentication. Data origin, right, is a corroboration of the source of the, of the data. So that Bob can actually look at the message and say, yeah, so Alice actually sent that. So we can authenticate Alice and authenticate that the message had come from Alice. You can see those two powerful, powerful points of the, of the authentication side. So access control, moving down the list, right, is the ability to limit and control access to host systems and applications via communication links. So this means in our context, right, computer networks, not front doors to houses and, and such that um, the correct individuals are, are identified, they are authenticated, right, that their identification assertions are validated, and then they're, then they're authorized. So the three steps for access control. Hi, I'm John. Yes, you are John. Identification. Authentication is the affirmation of identification and then the authorization is and you are approved John to do the following three things so that is a role-based access control model there's volumes of content that's out on the internet and within IBM about how to implement an RBAC or role-based access control system so the third element data copy Data confidentiality, right, ensures that the messages are received as sent with no duplication, insertion, modification, reordering, replay, or loss. So the loss part of that, right, is that the message is not destroyed. Reordering, right, so that if the messages are describing a sequence of events that they come in the correct sequence. There could be a lot of disruption if those, in fact, um, are are changed in that modification side. That the pay that the payload of the message is changed. 
This is the example of let's not meet at 1 p.m. for lunch, but let's meet at 11.30. Insertion, no new modifications, and duplication that we're not sending duplicate messages to confuse Alice or Bob. So the uh, non-repudiation phase of this, right, is that the um, both Alice and Bob in a message transaction can't deny that the transaction occurred. We talked about this a little earlier about message transmission. Alice sends Bob a message. Alice can prove that Alice sent the message and Bob received it. Bob can prove that Alice sent the message and he received it. So there's no ambiguity area of um, not being able to authenticate a transaction. It's extremely important within financial services, both for banking and for insurance, that we need to be able to uh, remove any capability of saying, I didn't do that, right? So identification, authentication, confidentiality, all of that's in play with that. And we talked about availability a little bit earlier on this, that the uh, resource is accessible and usable. So we talked about the availability, right, that the that the capability, uh, the service capability being provided by the um, by the enterprises is, is, is available, that it's there, and that it responds in a timely manner. Because if, uh, you know, you can think that if you put a response in and you got a response back the next day, that's not timely at all. So that is part of the availability part.